why Ocean's 8 is better than Ocean's 11. Ocean's 11 was a film that came out in the early 2000s as a heist film. It was an intellectual thriller adrenaline film rush with heist and mystery elements that took a sympathetic character and motivated the audience oh, hey. to follow him in his Plus, endeavors. Danny Ocean was a brilliant, charismatic man who motivated a group of other charismatic men to do an interesting, sexy heist against a casino for his own personal game. The Oceans franchise as a whole consisted of Oceans 11, Oceans 12, and Oceans 13. The original cast of Oceans 11, as is pictured here in this clip from the end of the film, was only added on as the movies continued gaining in size. Ocean's Eleven franchise was a wildly successful group that represented so many different kinds of men in their pursuits of performing this great illegal heist as an act of pure intelligence. The ultimate goal of the Ocean's Eleven movie was to create a sexy heist film that motivated the audience to be as thrilled and as invested in the heist as the characters. This heist is high stakes is extremely high reward, except you have to have a huge personal stake in it. This film has to motivate the audience to want to follow along in order to get the same catharsis and thrill through their actions. They dress up as a SWAT team to rob a casino. The key component, however, of all of these is that there has to be a personal motivation beyond money. Yes, it could be their careers and their long histories as content, but the Ocean's Eleven franchise established this, the goal of their brand of a heist movie as being romantically motivated with Danny Ocean's wife. Ocean's Eleven defines Danny's personal motivation as winning back his wife, which he successfully does. She runs back to him, realizing that she loved him all along, Wait, going through husband. swarms of people Tess. just to get back to her husband. Dean. Tess, I told you. I knew what I was doing. I did. All right, let's go. How long will you be? Well, three to six months, I guess. However, this is Ocean's Eleven's downfall. Ocean's Eight, although being built on the foundation that Ocean's Eleven provided, still accomplishes the sexy heist movie better. For starters, it begins with this scene here of Debbie Ocean going through Bergdorf Goodwin's right after being released for prison with her whole spiel about being a better person. This is where Ocean's 8 really gets what Ocean's 11 lost. Ocean's 11 relied on the sexy heist film of trying to win back an ex-wife and rob a casino, while Ocean's 8 understands and identifies that the real fun is in the actual heist. Here, the movie completely acknowledges and successfully carries out smaller series of heists to bring the audience up to the level of the larger event. Sandra Bullock is introduced in the same exact way as Danny Ocean. They are both given this grand entrance. However, Debbie Ocean immediately goes off in her petty shoplifting to start small and get high, but in each step you see what information she picks up that gives her the key intellect that allows her to effectively Get away with it. Ocean's Eleven opens very similarly, with Danny Ocean being released from prison and immediately going back to the same place and his same old habits. Both of them slightly casing for their next type. However, although they both immediately do something illegal, Danny Ocean's first steps into a casino, into the gambling world to set up the people to then cooperate and pull off the heist against the casino owned by the man who is now dating his ex-wife. Ships, please. But Danny's intellect and his charisma is shown like not by what he then pulls off, 
but is demonstrated in the little scam he runs to get Thank the you. attention of his friend, the dealer. He's not actively working to pull something off for his own enjoyment. 20. He's actively working towards 19. his same Good goal. Star. He's not establishing himself in any new role. He's just reinforcing the aspects right, of his well, personality that have already been established, but is working to get the pieces of the plot working together. In the function of the story, both Ocean's 8 and Ocean's 11 depend heavily on their ensemble cast, but revolve around one major player. In Ocean's Eleven, the establishment and the picking and choosing of each person is shown as the intellectual prowess that Danny has. He's choosing these people on a whim, but he's making a team that's going to properly do what he needs to do. Where Debbie actively targets very specific people working with her partner and doing a fair amount of research, their recruitment scenes are something that determine the difference between these two films. Where Ocean's Eleven established the ensemble as just a function of the heist, Ocean's Eight counters it. Ocean's Eleven relies on George Clooney's charisma to bring out Danny Ocean's intellect in the development of his character to such a degree that there isn't anything in the story structure to determine what Danny Ocean has done to earn these people's respect. Ocean's 8 takes this question and then addresses these specific choices as a more societal focus and gives a reason and shows Debbie earning their trust as she's executing other elements of the heist, making her an excellent multitasker. Oh, what about him? Oh, he's a him. So? Don't want a him. Hey, maybe it's because it's a him, because it's a him. No, he's not a him. I barely know the guy. What's wrong with a him? A him gets noticed, a her gets ignored, and for once we want to be ignored. What? In conversation with the Ocean's Eleven films, Ocean Eight defines itself by giving itself a motivation for recreating this heist with women. As Debbie Ocean says, a her gets ignored. She seeks Sorry, out Danny. a specific group of women with the motivations that pops. women have. They have a conversation, so they talk about an issue here? that they are actually friends and do have a you. long relationship together. However, it is in this story. very integral choice that gives them all a fundamental a motivation and tool that they use together in their anonymity in society. Debbie's choices of all these women also means that she chooses less people because she wants to be ignored. She makes herself a uniting force that brings all these women together to show their skills. However, in the presentation of this recruitment and the other recruitments, the way that each woman is given equal screen time while also demonstrating her skills not as a way to prove herself to Debbie, but to just establish herself in the fabric of the film first and foremost, and then also prove herself to Debbie, means that these women's skills and abilities are not as within question, except in this scene with Rihanna. It's just demonstrating the funny character and the aspects of humanity, that there are so many layers to women, and they use this very fact to their advantage. They can't use this fact and build their heist on this understanding that people constantly underestimate women without showing what is underestimated about each of the women on their team. That's the major strength that they include in all of their discussions of this. They actively identify what it is that this woman brings to the table and what you think she does so that they use it as a tool in their process. Each time the first impression is established, there is a later scene in the film showing how they're then using it to their advantage. It speaks in conversation with itself, properly executing the exact goal Debbie Ocean wishes to in her choices for these women. Really? This sets Ocean's Eight and Debbie apart uh, from Ocean's Eleven by giving each of these women the room to show their skill. Here in this scene, Aquafina, 
is messing with this guy, but is underestimated because she chooses three-card Monty. She chooses an us underestimated, small, very common game, but it is her sheer skill that makes it so easy that they're using the stability of their first impression to allow themselves to really gain the money, the energy, and the resources that they desire as con artists. She does that to take the watch, which they show in this scene. But as they go to Subway in the next scene, she takes their watches and they don't even notice. When you rewatch the film right here, keep a careful eye out to see if you can see Aquafina lift Debbie Ocean and Lou's watches. 100%. The key part is that okay, the audience it. cannot. Great. Lou cannot. Debbie uh, can. Can I get my watch back, please? Thank you. And um, hers as well? No. Sorry. It's okay. She sees in this woman, in this woman, what she brings to the table, just as she sees in Tammy what she brings. She looks at these women who are underestimated in the exact way the film presents them and uses it to her hey, enormous strength. Can you do me a favor? In the You're rhythm of the film, Ocean's Eleven spends the time and energy to both of you go get very specific members of their squad. As they get they these members, what they do is they, they show the obstinance of the characters they and they the sheer balls. motivating they power of the gold that, that they're giving them. They only say it a couple of times, but they just reference it, making it seem so lofty, so incredible, that anybody would be foolish to pass it up, but that their confidence and their charisma is what really motivates these people to come to their side. They give a background history of how important, how insurmountable this goal is by saying that this is a specific heist and a specific goal that has been marked by the constant attempts and failures to execute it perfectly. That to do so just on the sheer premise of robbing a casino would be such an enormous feat, but specifically to rob the one that they've targeted for solely personal reasons is insane. Outside of season, As they explain all of this and they establish all this, they do not spend the time and effort that Ocean's 8 does in truly showing what the characters provide. They give small snippets as a sexy heist movie does, explaining what tools they bring to the table, but they don't really show how each person is like a Swiss army knife in their tool chest. They just show what they've taught them to perform as a way of demonstrating that, you know, they were always capable of putting together this heist. They just had to have a charismatic director of Danny Ocean to lead them to do it. It's what Ocean's 8 adds in the development of these women that Ocean's 11 abandons. As they make these two a duo, they don't have the same charisma and relationship as they're both the suave businessman. They're both the suave con man who can't trust each other and don't. Where Lou and Debbie have definitely had a different kind of relationship that's shown through their body language and also their kind of tongue and teacher's cheek discussions. These two That's right. don't establish themselves in the you same guys. way, except as their uniting what do you got against power Bennett? to convince people to join them. In discussing the rhythm of the heist, the identity of the heist, the difficulty of the heist, the layers, the charisma of Danny and Debbie Ocean, and the community that they build, of which they are at the helm, pales in comparison to the discussion of their personal motivations. Where Danny Ocean's motivation is to win back a woman who said that she did not want to be with him and divorced him as he was in prison, Debbie Ocean's motivation comes from a large revenge arc. She's shown here getting a new opportunity, getting a new grasp on life, and meeting a new man that will later become her lover. 
As they meet and sparks fly, Debbie's when future seems so piece, concrete. Another buyer and drive up and she place. walks the audience through, scene by scene, Money the development good, of their relationship and the long arcana that he was playing out on her. As she shows us day, all of this, uh, and as we are shown truly how hurt she what was, well, that's where she gets our motivation. That's where she ties us in. It's not her charisma, it's not the idea of robbing a neck of a woman at the Met Ball of the most expensive necklace in the world. No, she shows us exactly why she's making him the fall man. Because she's not doing all of this to get him back, it's just a happy accident. Just as he didn't crush her beneath his foot as the intent, but rather it was a happy accident of getting all the money. Debbie Ocean establishes a much better rationale for her personal goals. Debbie Ocean has successfully placed Claude Becker, her ex-flame and the man who sent her to prison, in the Met at the exact moment that she carries out a heist. She plants it on him, and each of these steps is so deeply subtle that this is what makes Ocean's 8 a far better film than Ocean's 11. Where Ocean's 11 used the sexy heist and relied solely on the charisma of the characters, Ocean's 8 gives a textual relationship between the characters and their roles. It explains how they have to go undercover in one of the largest situations by standing out in extremely specific ways. And it shows how they do this with their multitude of skills. Ocean's 8 then gives the motivation for Debbie establishing Claude Becker as the fall man as secondary to the main goal of a successful heist. She's in this family, she's in this family for a long time, and this is what they do. And the question of whether or not she should be doing this or this should be the heist she's doing is not what's within question. Ocean's Eleven questions whether or not Danny Ocean should be doing heist at all, as Julia Roberts asks of him. But Ocean's Eight acknowledges that this is inherent to her in the way that this is her plan and this is her goal that she's done. And now comes her next step. It does not make who she is a question, but rather lets her use it to her, her advantage in her pursuit of her larger goal of establishing a name for herself, building off of the power of her anonymity. Where Ocean's Eleven ignores the women and uses the flashy distractions as the main motivating force, this exact scene exemplifies what makes Ocean's Eight so fantastic. That replica necklace has been made 3D printed to perfection and has gotten all the way back down into the vault of Cartier for an expert to notice that it's been a fake. Ocean's Eleven establishes that the whole reason Danny is doing this is for Tess. In their first meeting, he sneaks up on her with his wedding 30 ring. Seconds late, I was about to and as so. her face falls, you can see that she no, doesn't Tess. want this. His whole goal of doing? winning her back is not something Mount. she's asked for. You're out. The prison. A fundamental Remember ignorance of what women want and what their back, goals are motivates this sit. story to a degree that just by watching now and caring about what I women think, her extreme Honey, personal check. change by the end of the movie seems so uncharacteristic it. that for him to fill out it. this whole group of people to accomplish this papers. highly illegal heist in out. her name to win I'd her write. back seems naive and perpetrating the same problems Danny, that had her leave him. Go now before it calls yeah. within question Bandit. their discussion of his ability on the whiskey. status of why he has to do this Danny. and how he Tess does it. It doesn't make him the Vermeer is 
quite and his good, motivations simple, vibrant, reasonable because she is not asking him to do this. She isn't in any way motivating him to do this aside from his own self image. As Ocean's Eleven establishes this, it takes away this sympathetic lead and just makes it a charismatic George Clooney giving the audience the catharsis of a large, sexy, flashy heist. On with my life, I want you with what Danny will or will not do to win Tess back does no not change his position in this film. Okay. The rhythm of the film You're is dependent on his ability to keep secrets from the audience oh. and from his fellow crew members. It's based on his ability to keep secrets from Tess and only tell her at very select Hello. times. But what he does is, is he breaks her trust in someone else to establish himself as the trustworthy one. Her trust in him was broken by his getting arrested as they were married and made this commitment. He positions himself as the harbinger of truth in shattering her view of another man. He gets into this casino really just to do this. His winnings and what he accomplishes is secondary. After all, the end scene doesn't spend a whole lot of time outlining what each character does with their wealth. The act of committing the heist and getting away with it is the greatest secret that those people could ever gain. Ocean's 8 succeeds where Ocean's 11 fails where Ocean's Eleven establishes the crew as the kings of suspicion by sowing the seeds of distrust within each other. Ocean's Eight establishes their connection to their community. Ocean's Eight shows Debbie Ocean's intelligence by choosing very specific women who are not happy in their life and what she's providing to them is what the money can do. It's the confidence the heist can provide so that they can effectively use their money. It outlines what each of them does and it's within their character. It follows this whole established role that they've made. It's funny, it's interesting, and it's true. Ocean's 8 talks about female friendship and the importance of connection. Daphne only gets on board because she's bored. This is the key difference between Ocean's 8 and Ocean's 11. Ocean's 8 has power and ability to give the proper motivations to each character and a better motivation to Debbie Ocean it means that it's a ve effective use of the rhythm and the difficulty of the heist in keeping it away from the audience marks it as a more successful heist film, but only on the format of the goal. Ocean's 8 successfully accomplishes the goal of being a sexy, suspicious heist film with catharsis for the audience based on a sympathetic lead character by giving the lead character and every other character more sympathy. It doesn't build on the basis that Ocean's Eleven has provided by developing characters. After all, it only references Danny Ocean as a man in a cemetery. But what it does is it acknowledges the core motivations and exterior rewards from an act this grand in a way that Ocean's Eleven fails to do at every step. Ocean's Eight is better than Ocean's Eleven because it successfully captures what it means to go under the radar in a world you would have loved it. where the consequences are grand.